Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you my version of the traditional forge bellows. This is the bellows that I built to go along with the portable forge unit that I use when I demonstrate to the public. It's large enough to feed a good sized fire but it's still small enough to be carried around easily. The canvas that you see tied to the cross rail is a cover that I designed to protect the bellows in case I get caught in the rain in a multi-day event. I've based this design on traditional examples that I've seen, but I've added in a few design features that make it easy to maintain and move around so it's perfect for demonstrating. In fact, I've used this a few times now and it's much easier to set up than my hand crank blower. I used regular construction grade spruce lumber to build this bellows and I was able to get the entire bellows out of six 2 by 10 by 8 foot boards. I milled the top and bottom boards down to an inch and a quarter thickness to get them as smooth as possible and the center board I left the full inch and a half. I jointed the edges and glued everything together in one step using pocket screws to hold the board together until the glue dried and that worked very well. I've made several bellows before, usually using plywood as the boards, and they just didn't work. Uh, I found that bellows have to be heavy to work properly, and there's just no getting around that. The upper and lower chamber has a floating rib that is used to control the leather on the bellows and keep it from billowing out too much. This rib just needs to be loosely fitted over pins. You don't want to be installing hardware that could cause problems later on. The hinges are made from 14 gauge sheet metal. They're just a basic rolled hinge, but I've welded everything together to make sure that there's no way that they're ever coming apart. The pin is a quarter inch in diameter and the hinge is made with a very loose fit. These hinges are going to be mortised in place and the extra length is going to allow me to put eight screws on each face of the hinge so I can pack up and move these bellows all I want and these hinges aren't going to be loosening up anytime soon. The center board and the bottom board each have two valves. And you can see how the material for the floating rib needs to be narrow enough to make sure that it doesn't interfere with the working of these valves. I made the valves from 8th inch furniture grade birch plywood. It's very light and very stable. The one thing that I added to the center board and a bottom board that is not on a traditional design is an access hatch. This allows me to reach inside either chamber, remove the valves, or do any maintenance that I need to do. This is a brace that goes across the bottom board. It keeps the bottom board straight and it also provides a place to mount the lift handle. The lift handle is going to be bolted in place to this plate that I have mortised into the underside of the brace. It's just a piece of flat stock with two half inch nuts welded to it. The nozzle is also removable so I need to install another mounting plate on the very front of the bellows. Again, it's a flat piece of plate with half-inch nuts welded to it. This mounting plate is also going to be used to attach a base plate that I need when I'm moving the bellows around. It's just a heavy plank that's bolted into the same holes that I use for the nozzle. It just provides a wide enough footprint to allow the bellows to stand up on its own. The valves are made using the template that's described in the PDF file that accompanies this video. Every part of the valve is measured off using this template to make sure that they're as identical as possible. The valve is made up of three pieces. There's the plywood board that gives the support to the valve, and then there's two layers of leather. Between the plywood and the thin leather that actually forms the gasket of the valve, I've placed a fairly thick piece of leather. 
This thick circle of leather is slightly smaller than the air vent hole and it creates a shoulder that allows the valve to create a better seal. You start assembling the valve by riveting these three pieces through the center hole that's marked on the valve template. The last thing you need to do when you're assembling the valve is to place a few rivets around the outside edge of the plywood to make sure that the leather always lays flat and doesn't fold over on itself. All you need is about four or five rivets around the outside edge. I'm just using common nails as rivets. The head of the nail is on the leather side and I'll drive it through the wood. I'll cut them to length and then I just roughly clench them over. They just need to hold the leather in place. There really isn't a lot of stress on this rivet. The mounting block for the valve is just two pieces of plywood that have been stapled together. The wider top edge of the block keeps the valve from opening too far. And of course I use the template to make sure that the holes line up with everything else. Here you see the valve template clamped in position. I'm getting ready to drill the holes that I need to mount the valves. You can see how the edges of the hole on the bottom board are lining up with the circle that's drawn on the template. I mark the location of the holes and I always drill the holes from the side that the valve is going to be mounted on. That way if the drill holes aren't perfectly square they will always be aligned because they'll be starting exactly where I need them to to fit the mounting block for the valve. And even though you've used the same template to build the valves and drill all the holes in all the valve locations, it's still a good idea to test the valves at this stage before you close in the bellows. There's always a possibility that the drill bit could wander slightly and make a valve hard to fit, so it's better to find that out now when you have easy access to these drill holes. Once you have the valves fitted and the hinges in place, you're ready to start wrapping the bellows with leather. This is the leather that I sewed together in the first video, and I used an air nailer to staple the leather to the frame. And then I wrapped all the edges with this oak bumper strip that I nailed on with hand forged nails. I hammered the nails directly into the three solid boards of the bellows, but I pre-drilled all the nail holes for the floating rib so that I could lightly drive those nails home. The bottom board has a number of skid plates that make sure that I don't get hung up on any of these bolts when I'm dragging it in and out of the car. They're all screwed in place from the outside, so if they ever get damaged and need replacing, that's easily done. This might seem like a lot of stuff on the bottom of this bellows, but it really doesn't get seen unless you're laying on the ground underneath the nozzle. When I used this bellows for the first time, I realized I was going to have to change my design slightly. I had originally mounted the pins that support the bellows directly into the center board. I just drilled a hole and drove the pins in place. But as I started working I realized the pins were moving around. So rather than worry about when these pins were going to fall out or split the center board, I decided to go to a totally different system. I decided to mount hardwood blocks to the underside of the center board. So here is the center board and this is where I have the hardwood block mounted to the underside. This series of blocks is going to allow me to run a solid bar directly through the entire width of the bellows. And because the blocks are glued to the underside of the center board, there's absolutely no stress being placed on the center board. I moved the location of the blocks back by a couple of inches because I needed to clear the bolts that hold the valves in place. Here you can see two of the support blocks. The one on the outer edge of the bellows is sitting just underneath the floating rib. The block in the center is really just used to lock the bar in place. So here I have the new support bar that I'm using. Once again, it runs through the entire width of the bellows and out both sides. 
As I insert the bar through the bellows, I need to slide on some locking collars that I'm going to use to keep the bar in position. I'll slide one on each side of the center block. Once I have the bar in position, I'll use an Allen wrench to lock down the collars. And this will prevent the bar from sliding out of position. This is the gluing setup that I used. I slid the bar into position and I used a ratchet strap to apply the clamping pressure that I needed until the glue set. Of course you're not going to need to do this because if you decide to build a bellows you'll be able to glue these blocks in before you close everything in. But it does illustrate the value of the access hatches. Thanks for watching and I'll finish this up in the next video.